Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host and cook today, Ference. And what I'm, my goal today is just to show you guys a really easy deer or venison steak recipe with a really delicious and sweet tangy rose hip sauce along with some fries. It's very easy to make. It's simple, but I'm telling you, if you cook it right, it's so good. I mean, we all have different kinds of taste. So, hey, let's get into it. First steps first, of course, you want to wash your meat very thoroughly. You want to get any of that blood out, you know, and just just take your time on that. You don't don't rush. Just kind of also try to squeeze out anything else because you'd be surprised. It's, it stays in there sometimes. <laughs> we were holding on to this meat for about a, a month or so, so it took, required a little bit of cleaning. I also like to just take the a napkin and dab both sides of the meat just to get off any excess water, any excess blood. And of course, guys, just try to. It's imp I think it's important to clean up after yourself. Help your boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad out, and just keep it clean. Anyway, also washing your hands key. When you're dealing with meat, you don't want to be touching the meat and a bunch of other things that could cause some problems. Anyway, first steps first. I like. So this is not absolutely necessary, but for me, I like to take a knife and just cut the ends of the meat of e every few inches. And this serves a purpose of stopping preventing the meat from curling in a pan. I don't know if you've ever, you guys have ever made a steak or a pork chop or something and the meat curls up and then the, just the cooking is inconsistent because it's not totally flat. So I personally like to do that. After that, I am taking the next tool, my little hammer with some spikes, pretty medieval, but it's, uh, it's, it's a good tool. I recommend it. You don't have to just do it just with everything but for this particular recipe I like to do it because it requires the spices and the spicing on this is key so you want to uh, oh I guess I'm gonna say it you want to beat the meat a little bit on both on each side not too hard though because you don't want to start breaking up the, the the muscle tissue you want to just you know just sp spread it out and you'll see it as you can see as we're hitting it, it the meat kind of spreads out a little bit it's got some indentations for the spices to go in as well as I feel like the purpose of relaxing the meat. I think deer is a very delicate meat, opposed to what some people might think, being gamey or whatever, but that's just my experience, especially if you know how to butcher it. So we have our meat set up and I have it as close together as possible. I hate wasting anything, so I don't wanna waste the spices that is gonna go on this, especially since our first spice is going to be a, I don't know if they have it in most stores, but this certain spice, Let's try to say it. Boko Bogio. Boko Bogio. Okay. <laughs> it's from Hungary. What basically it, all it is is pine nuts. That hap, that particular but, uh, vat of it came from Hungary. Small little nuts that kind of look like peppercorns. And they also have the they have a peppery taste, but a think of a pine cone and a peppercorn put together. It tastes great, especially on wild meat, venison, bear, elk if you're lucky enough to hunt it. Hunt it. So. All you gotta do is really break it down. You want to crush it into, you don't have to overdo it, but you know, so that is pretty flaky. So this is gonna be the primary spice. What you wanna do is apply it liberally to all of the meat on both sides, of course. Um, <clears throat> it's not like the salt and pepper, which I would recommend that you put a lot less of. This spice is, it's, it's intense. I wish you guys could, I could give you like a smell through the video, but <laughs> that there's the technologies is not there yet. Hopefully soon. I'm just kidding. That'd be terrible. Anyway, I only put a tiny, tiny bit of pepper just cause I already said the pepper, the, uh, the pine nut has a very intense taste. I'm going to push that in. That's the beauty of those little, um, those little, that little spike hammer thing. It lets the, the spices get nice and situated in there. I always pat it down just to put it in there. Okay, so next side, like I said, guys, you you saw how many kernels I put in there. It was you want to be pretty liberal with it, especially since it tastes delicious. A little bit of salt, like half as much pepper. And guys, it's all about having fun. Get your pump on. Do whatever you got to do while you're doing this. Enjoy yourself. It's all that's the number one. That's the name of the game. <sighs> okay. So next step is to make the sauce. Like I said, this is going to be a rose hip sauce. This particular thing comes from a Polish store here in New Jersey. I don't know if they have it at ShopRite or wherever you might shop, 
but this came from an, a pretty ethnic store. We call it the Polish store. So rose hip sauce, you want to be also, you want to put a good amount of that. That's the, the main base of the sauce. Then some Dijon mustard. I suppose regular other mustard would work too, but it's, it gives it the tangy taste. So right now we got sweet, we got tangy. Rum, guys, that is the key. You actually, I'm just kidding. That is not the key, but it's a it's a it's a nice little uh, enhancement. You just want to be careful not to overdo with the liquid, otherwise the sauce is going to be too watery, and you want it more to be. Uh, saucy <laughs> a little bit thicker than that although i will admit that in this video i did make it a little bit too liquidy as you're about to see right now we're checking the consistency because i want to reduce it to the perfect amount as you can see it's it's almost it's almost like water so i put in more jam anyway i forget about the sauce the pan the pan and the meat i use cast iron as many many professionals might just because it just retains heat so well as, as my butter, I'm substituting butter for, you heard, you know, it's straight up fat. I don't even care. Just put in that fat. It's, it's pretty much bacon fat that my dad got from the Hungarian store. God bless him. As you can see, I didn't even start the pan yet just because I'm cooking the steaks li literally two and a half minutes on each side. I like it medium rare. So I want to put the fries first because steak fries tend to be, tend to take a, a, like about 10 minutes. So you know, that's double the cooking time. So I'm doing the steak first. My sauce is reducing. Got to make sure that oil is hot because these fries take forever to cook unless that oil is hot. All right. So two minutes later, my fries are going. It is time to fire up that cast iron. I'm telling you guys, it's instantaneous. This butter or this uh, fat just starts to melt. And when I put it down, you know, the oil is ready when it starts to ripple. You guys see that? It's very subtle. You need to know you need to learn where to look for it. All right, we bring out the meat. Uh, we did it in two different rounds just because the, the pan wasn't big enough. I wish I had two cast iron pans so I could show you guys uh, what it's like to manage two of them. It's fun. I, I really enjoy uh, having three different pans in my hand going crazy. It's fun. So unfortunately, we're only just working with uh, one, but that's fine. <clears throat> So like I said, guys, on these kinds of steaks, you guys saw how thin they were, especially that I beat them down to that you really don't need much side. And if you overcook venison, then you're drilling with really, just really tough. And it's, I don't know, I just, I personally just don't like venison, anything but medium rare to rare. I already could tell that it was time to go because I could just smell it. And you couldn't guys see the amount of uh, smoke, steam, whatever you want to call it but a lot of the vapors that are coming out. So a lot of the moisture is coming out. And you can see just from here that the color is pretty good. My fries are looking good. My sauce is looking good. I'm going to move the camera in a sec also just to show you guys something a little bit kind of cool. When you know your fries are done cooking when the fries are ri rising to the top. Even with these thick fries, they do that too. So we're going to go ahead and take that out. It's my brother in the background. He was my uh, cheerleader. <laughs> Plus, I was cooking for him. It was cooking for the, the two of us. My parents were home that day, so it was it was uh, I was being a really good big bro and cooking for the two of us. <laughs> All right, serving time. Like I said, guys, our meat is done. Two minutes on each side. Our fries were done. You want to do the fries first because it takes a little bit of time. And then, boom, finish up with the fries. Bringing out the sauce. You don't really want to. I don't. I would not. I would. I personally just put the sauce on the meat just because I use the fries to soak up the sauce as I go. That's just my personal style of eating this dish. And like I just said, just to, oh, I spilled a little bit. Uh, I'm going to lose some presentation points. Oh, well. Anyway, food for me, food for my brother only took 30 minutes. I think it's, this is one of the easiest and most delicious things to do in terms of reward versus effort. It's up there. Anyway, guys, I also like, I always pair, you know, red meat with red wine, boom, of course. Show you guys that one piece. You can see already how pink it is. And I'll show you guys a second one. Even though th that steak was nice and thin, it's yeah, it's uh, just the way I like it. Just a little bit of pink, but very high moisture. Guys, boom, that is it. Not even 10 minutes. I speed some things up, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's more on the way.